Well, it's Friday, the 5th day of July 2013. Good evening and welcome to Kitchen Prime. My name is James Smart. The highlights. Their salaries will be there as from uh, this evening and tomorrow. And therefore, those who have not gone to school must now report to school on Monday. You have seen these other small emerging unions, are government unions. Every time we come out to fight, government uses them to push inferior demand. A divided house, teachers but ways on president's call. There must have been first a complaint lodged before the returning officer against which the returning officer made a decision for you to sit on appeal against that decision. We all know that that register was fraud. Hunting the hunter, the re registration cost haunts KPTO. 44 years on, mystery persists on Tom Boy assassination. Yearning to see the justice. It is five years now. And on case files tonight, the cold-blooded murder of five tuk-tuk passengers. This is Kate in Prime. Good evening and welcome. We begin tonight with fresh details that could threaten Kathy Kilonzo's quest to become Kenya's first elected female senator. Earlier today, the Makueni Senate candidate admitted to using an expired passport to register as a voter. Kathy also conceded that she never verified her registration status before the last general election. However, court lawyers put up a spirited fight, forcing one of the petitioners to admit that she had tried to woo Kathy to run on a jubilee ticket. KTN's political reporter Sam Ogina begins our comprehensive news coverage with Kathy Stan on the other side. Table stand for the presidential petition heroine Kathy Kilonzo as roles changed from being the flamboyant, tough advocate to a witness on the spot. Kathy was at pains to validate her contested registration status. Pushed to the limit, she admitted to not verifying her registration status during the cleanup exercise, despite IEBC's two-week window period for the exercise. Kathy also admitted to the use of a passport that had expired in 2001 and a copy of her ID to register. I know those SMS and the verification that we issued this acknowledgement to everyone. But, wasn't evidence of but the wiper candidate reprimanded the electoral agency for a registration debacle. The IEBC is the custodian of the register. And we all know that that register was fraud. But in its defense, IEBC discredited Kathy Kilonzo's registration slip, pointing out discrepancies in the elector's card number, stating that while Kathy claimed she is registered in Karen, her card reflected St. Mary's Primary School as her registration center. But you want to tell us that the registration center current and your registration and your police station and the social home are one on the same thing. Yet Karen is not there. Makweni returning officer testifying in the case recoiled on his action stating he cleared Kathy given the IEBC registration slip and the looming nomination deadline. Otherwise, he says he wouldn't have cleared Kathy if informed she was missing from the voters' register. The only copy that was available among those three green books was one, as the other two were locked in advertisements in the boxes that were before the box. Therefore, I could not establish for sure that she was actually not in the register. Two other witnesses testified in the case. Agnes Ndete, a petitioner in the case, admitted to visiting Kathy's mother at least twice to woo Kathy to join the Jubilee Alliance. Meanwhile, another witness, John Kihiko, equally challenging Kathy's registration, could not even defend his own affidavit upon cross-examination. The Complaints Committee sits Saturday to hear Wiper's petition against Jubilee aspirant for the Makweni seat, Philip Kaloki. Wiper argues Kaloki is a Wiper Party member. Samugina Ketian, Nairobi. 
Palma malfighters who were not included in the first list of beneficiaries may not have lost out on the compensation after all. Lawyer Paul Mwite today announced that phase two of the pursuit for compensation will begin soon as lawyers are readying themselves to take the British government to task again. Now, Muta was speaking during the funeral service of the late Ndungu Wagisheru, who served as the national chairman of the Mau Mau War Veterans Association. Now, differences among us, the Mau Mau heroes, were also forgotten today, albeit temporarily, as leaders of different factions were united in sorrow. Carol Nderi attended the funeral in Gatarakwa and brings us the following story. <laughs> The late freedom fighter General Ndongo Wagisheru was laid to rest today at his Gatarako farm in Kenny, near the county. Scores of fellow freedom fighters attended the funeral to honor the fallen hero. The late Ndungu, who passed on the 19th of this month, aged 85 years, has been praised over time for his role of shooting down choppers that belonged to the colonialists and playing a key role in the struggle against the yoke of colonialism. Ndungu wagecheru na wenzake, waliweka chakula ndani ya 40 million people. Kama mzungu yuko hapa, nyinyi press. Hakuna mtu angesimama mbele yetu na kamera. Ni hasadi sana. Kuligana nini muna kuja kumuzidikiza. Kiyo gati wetu dugu gecheru. Paul Mwite, who has been at the forefront of the suit against the British government, asked the freedom fighters who feel aggrieved for not being enlisted among those to be compensated to be patient. Tunawambia awamu hii ya pili, hatuwa ya kwanza ni kamati iudwe tume iudwe isuguke county zote 47 Kenya hii watuletee uroda ya ukweli ni nani na nani alihusika na vita ya Mau Mau iwe hatua ya kwanza the fight will go on until such time as the british government come up with acceptable proposals the animosity between warring Mau Mau groups has been rife, but today they seemed to be united in grief as evidenced by the attendance of both Gitu Akahengeri and Elijah Kenya, alias General Bahati factions. Na waingereza tulo wa shida huko kwao, majuzi, wakatoa fidia, wakasema sore, ile pesa yenyewe, ili zemetana itaingia Kenya, ili kuwa pesa kidogo. Kidogo sana sana kama kuna vikundi ama kuna tofauti mkae chini muangalie hii maneno na najua suluhu itapatikana Ndongo Agishero who had five wives and 19 children will be forever remembered for his instrumental role in Kenya's liberation for the freedom fighters who might be feeling a little left out of the compensation, they've been urged to be a little patient as they await the second phase of the compensation, as well as being urged to speak in unison if they are to benefit from the British government. Carol Dari for KTN in Gatarakwa, Nyeri County. All right, President Uru Kenyatta has called on county leaders to make agriculture a key priority in their county development agenda since most of the agricultural activities and funding have been devolved to the counties. Speaking in Nakuru during the official opening of this year's ASK show, Uru said although the sector has just achieved an impressive average growth rate of 5.6%, Many Kenyans remain exposed to food insecurity and malnutrition while farmers still operate on subsistence level and are impoverished. He added that failure in the sector at the county level will directly affect the overall performance at the national level. However, Uhuru reiterated that the government has put measures to promote agriculture towards economic development and hunger and poverty eradication among the rural people. Has this year subsidized the price of fertilizers? from Kenya shillings 3,800 to Kenya shillings 2,500 for planting fertilizer. And from Kenya shillings 2,700 to Kenya shillings 1,600 for top dressing fertilizer. Already the government 
has deliberately placed irrigation and stormwater harvesting as a priority national agenda. In order to demonstrate this commitment, 347 million Kenya shillings has been set aside to finance the construction of 132 water harvesting structures countrywide under the Water Harvesting for Food Security programs. The Ministry together with the other sector ministries are currently implementing the Agriculture Sector Development Strategy that envisages a food secure and prosperous nation. These will position the sector strategically as a key driver for delivering the 10% annual economic growth rate as in state in the economic pillar of Vision 2030. All right, now to the ongoing teacher strike and the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers, CUPET, today struck a deal with the Teacher Service Commission that effectively put an end to their strike permanently. The deal involved the signing of a return-to-work formula with the government that would pave way for a new collective bargaining agreement with the employer. But as Patrick Amemo reports, their sister union, NUT, maintains it will not call off the teacher strike until an agreeable offer is put on the table by the government. Since we have signed a return to work formula, the, stri the strike is now officially called off. What this signifies is the spirit of negotiation. In the return to work formula, CUPET will now pursue negotiations under the guidance of the Salaries and Remuneration Commission and a consultative committee on terms and conditions of service for teachers as established under the TSC Act 2012. Some of the demands CUPET pushed for during the strike period included harmonization of commuter, leave and responsibility allowances to match those of civil servants. For now, it's not possible to tell whether the CUPET TSC deal will hold, for no tangible figures were put on the table. We have not come up with figures to say for this request on this allowance, you'll get this much. But I have said the offer is attractive. We have an, a very attractive offer on harmonization of commuter allowance. We have a very attractive offer on responsibility allowances. And you do realize this is a, technically, uh, a technical I issue because we did ask specific responsibility allowance. Let them come to the table then we give you a counter offer. That's what we are saying. The details will be on the table, the negotiation table. So let's not write, you know, let's not give false hope to teachers. I'm a soldier in the army. Elsewhere, after a meeting at the head office, KNUT top leadership insisted it will not call off strike until its demands are adequately addressed. Even before we call off the strike, as required by industrial procedures, we must engage in meaningful and constructive dialogue and get an acceptable back-to-work formula. Then we call off the strike. Kupet is in the process of signing an inferior deal with the government. KNUT says they will not be cowed by the Attorney General's threats to start contact of court proceedings against them. NAT is waiting for the AG to come and serve whatever documents he has. You can see we have not run away from our building. The Teacher Service Commission maintains the contentious 1997 teacher salary deal was overtaken by legal notice number 16 of 2003. We paid that agreement in five phases beginning July 2003 and completed payments by July 2007. And the allowances <coughs> were still being implemented as agreed by the Kenya National Union of Teachers. The AG has been the source of all these troubles in the education sector. He has consistently misadvised the government about legal notice number 534 of 1997, and we have learned that it is his office that gazetted legal notice number 16 of 2003 contra the law. Patrick Amimo, KTN. 
All right, in the studio with me, I'm joined by Akelo Misoru, the Secretary General of CUPET, who is in a celebratory mood tonight. Akelo, uh, congratulations for signing that deal. But as you signed that deal also, I want to get the details of that. The, your sister uh, union, KNUT, is calling you an inferior union. Uh, uh, brother, I think uh, it is uh, simplistic to start boxing a shadow which is non-existent. Uh, we are both creations of the law and we uh, transact the business of our operations and our mandates within the law. Uh, because uh, uh, CUPET was registered in 1998 under the repealed Trade Unions Act. KNUT was registered in 1957 under the Trade Unions Act also. So uh, it is cheap uh, to say that uh, we are inferior and we are a creation of a government. It we are both creations of the law. All right. Yes. Th 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 that's well yeah. said. But yeah. the question then is, how many members do you have? How uh, many members do you represent? Uh, CUPET in the first place represent teachers in post-primary institutions, secondary schools, uh, technical uh, uh, schools and, and colleges. How many and these are have? teachers who teach in, uh, who are employees of Teacher Service Commission. So we have 52,000 members. That is not an inferior figure because the total number of teachers in that uh, in that uh, subsector are only 66,000. How do you react to yeah. those uh, who would say tonight that, listen, CUPET is a creation of government and in fact you are traitors and you have not served the will or the hopes of teachers well by first calling off the strike and then now signing a deal that your sister union is saying it's an inferior deal. You know, calling off a strike is a strategy in industrial relations. Another thing is that the strike was called off because uh, there was a court order which was subsisting. Have you seen that court uh, order? That court order was served on us on 20, uh, 26th uh, uh, June this year. And we went to court on 28th. And we, we defended our position in relation to the, the strike which started on 19th. So the, the idea that we did not get a service, we were not we were ignorant of the, of the orders, is, is, is a cheap propaganda that some people want to peddle around. And our case course was course number 22 of 2013 in the Industrial Court of Kenya. I want to, I want to bring in uh, another perception. You cannot be said to be a, a traitor when you have, are obedient to the law. And uh, I am I'm repeating that... If you are a creature of the law, you must uh, uh, operate within but that, that, that but parameter. But, 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 but that yeah. is given credence that you yeah. were created in 1998 when yeah. teachers were on strike, Nat had called it a strike, that's when you were created. It gives credence that you were formed by the government so that you can push back the KNUT the, then. Uh, the same principle applies to what reasons led to the creation of KNUT. But I don't want to address that. In 1985, Students of Kenyatta University agitated for uh, for pay to be uh, employed upon completion in Job Group K because teachers who are leaving college were being employed earlier on in Job Group H. Other public servants were being employed in Job Group K. So this is the spirit which led to the creation of CUPET. And even in 1993, when we uh, struggled to establish what we call National Union of Secondary School Teachers and Tertiary Institution called NOSTEKE, the KNUT went to court. They, they, today they are saying that they cannot respect the court. They stayed the registration on Rostike through a court injunction. So that one is, uh, it is uh, just a process. And I want also to repeat one other element which is very important uh, for, for consumption. Kenya had gone plural. According to the constitution of this land, workers have the freedom to form, join, and participate in the activities of a union of their choice. On that note, that is on, that note Akelo, on that note, Akelo, let me just uh, give you yeah. an update. Today, yeah. uh, teachers in Moranga, Mombasa, Embu, Narok, Eldred, and Meru have said that they are leaving Kupet, your umbrella body, and they are joining NAT. And they are saying A that total sham, my brother. What is happening is that there have been a uh, uh, dramatic... Uh, 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 program setting people where shoe signers and border border guys are given forms and they are told to line and uh, they, 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 they organize uh, uh, arrangements. You're, 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 you're calling them shoe signers. I'm telling the truth because I come from Migori because you have not mentioned Migori there. I saw some people in a, in a video clip and uh, some of them are border border, border guys and, and shoe signers. And then I said, now, if this is the place where I have stayed for over 20 years, who is that who is saying that he is a teacher at Kakarao Secondary School? Then I said, what is this? This is a total sham. 
So you've not, you, you've not lost any member. That's what uh, you. We, where, who, who, are, who are these members from? Me secondary school. This is this is a, a total a total simplistic arrangement to set things to, so that it is seen that we are losing face. We cannot lose face in this regard because we went to, on on strike for three major things: harmonize commuter, give us responsibility allowance, give us leave allowance. We are only left to negotiate the element of leave allowance. Let's talk but about that. Let's talk about that for a second. Responsibility allowance. Yes and commute allowance are all granted and we are going only to work on the details let's talk, on let's, from, uh, let's talk about for a second yes. you've called off the strike you've got to the negotiating table uh, what have you got for teachers what can you tell them tonight that we've got teachers one, have, two, three have massively gotten what we wanted from the strike harmonized commuter allowance which translates to 11.5 billion according to the estimates of teacher service commission we had done our estimate we thought it was something like uh, 15 billion but when we went to the real figures we realized that the figures are uh, according to the numbers of the teachers who are in service and it is 11.5 billion this the details of this are going to be worked according to the teachers grades and already we have the invitation to go and sit and actualize it because it is so a so good, how, how, a how much process. I, I need a figure Akilo. that is how, how much is the government really going to put out in terms of budget how much money have they told you that we're going to put one billion two billion whatever the amount x amount you know Give what, me a figure. once they have accepted the principle that harmonization of commute allowance is is is, is the, the offer they have we know that the 11.5 billion which the teacher service commission had tabulated is on 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 so it's 11.5 billion and then the responsibility allowance what is now remaining is that how much are we going to pay a principal who is in a six streamed school and how much will we pay a principal who is in a three streamed school so those are the details which are are left for the teachers to enjoy uh, okay, well, finally for me 30 seconds very quickly yes. between cupet and nat who's the inferior organization I, I want uh, to, uh, to say that we must respect the institutions as the way they are, but we, uh, we have the capacity to execute the mandates. I, it is going to be simplistic for me to say that KNUT is inferior. We know KNUT has been there for a long time, but the, 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 the time that you have existed does not give you credence to think that you are a, a superior. And the fact that you were born yesterday does not mean that I'm inferior. Akelomi, okay, sorry. Uh, thank, well, you, thank you so much. Thank you very much for being in our studio. Yeah. All right, talking to Akelomi, uh, sorry, who's the Secretary General of the Kenya National Union of Teachers, uh, the, the CUPET. Now, that story leads us to a big question tonight, and we ask, is CUPET betraying the teaching fraternity by striking a deal <coughs> with TSC? Is CUPET uh, betraying the teaching fraternity by striking a deal with TSC? Send me your yes or no responses. The brief comment uh, to the number 8040 and I'll sample your views during this live newscast and give you the full result at the end of this bulletin. You can also tweet me at James Smart. I'll be happy to look at those responses when you come on. Now let's move on. Now the government has set aside 20 billion shillings towards equipping technical training institutions to ensure quality vocational education and training across the country. Now speaking at the graduation ceremony of the Eldred Polytechnic in Wasingishu County, Deputy President William Ruto said the government is in discussion with donor partners to finance the improvements over the next two and a half years. The Deputy President noted with concern that there are serious gaps in engineering and science-oriented disciplines, saying the country is facing an acute shortage of plumbers and quality surveyors. Ruto said that the government has put in 500 million to the Higher Education Loans Board to ensure students in technical training institutions access education on loans. And because we realize that there exists serious gaps in our technical uh, capacity, in engineering courses, in science courses. The Jubilee government is discussing with donor partners and we already have set aside 20 billion shillings over the next two and a half years to equip all our technical colleges with necessary equipment for the training of our young men and women on technical skills, competence-based and skills-based technology.
Economic Planning and Development was assassinated outside a chemist on Government Road, currently known as the Moy Avenue. The death was shrouded in controversy, with Moeni pointing fingers at the then government of the day. KTN's Najma Ismail looks back at the events of that Saturday in 1969 and the events that unfolded thereafter. It was a Saturday morning in 1969 and as usual on a weekend, the streets of Nairobi were deserted. The then Minister of Economic Planning and Development, Tom Boyer, had gone to a chemist a long way avenue, but fate had something in store for him. A lone gunman by the name Nahashan Jiroge shot Mboya just as he left the chemist. Mboya was rushed to the Nairobi hospital where he died while receiving treatment. Tension was high across the country and several protests broke out. Many blamed the president's inner circle of being responsible for his death. Mboya was then viewed as a threat to the political careers of many. Nahashan Jiroge was later arrested and convicted of murder in a trial that was controlled and kept very private. He was hanged in November 8th the same year. However, before his death, Nahashan posed a riddle to the country when he asked the authorities why they won't go after the big man, leaving many whispering about the identity of the so-called big man. Several leaders have perished under similar unclear circumstances in the country and decades later many are still trying to search for the truth behind the political assassination of Robert Ouko. Pio Gama Pinto, J.M. Karaoke, among others. Two years ago, the Kibaki government erected Tom Boyer's monument along Moy Avenue in honor of the assassinated politician. It stands just a few meters from where he was murdered 44 years ago. He is buried in a mausoleum on Rusinga Island, which was built in 1970. Najma Ismail, KTN. Well, and as Najma Ismail revisits history, a South African anti-apartheid leader Nelson Mandela spent his 27th day in hospital. Doctors treating him denied claims that he is in a vegetative state. This follows a statement from the government refuting reports cited from court documents claiming that doctors had advised Mandela's family to switch off his life support machine. Katians okay, Asamilu, who has pitched camp in South Africa, brings us the details from Pretoria. Welcome, Untameti. Welcome, Rabeti. 27. Welcome, that was the number on everyone's lips Welcome, today in Pretoria. At exactly 2 minutes to 7 a.m. on Friday morning, a crowd had already gathered outside the Mediclinic Heart Hospital. South Africa's anti-apartheid hero Nelson Mandela was spending his 27th day in critical condition at the hospital. Locals say the number 27 was symbolic to his struggle as he spent 27 years in prison. These young ones from a local orphanage came out in numbers, braving the low temperatures to sing a song for Mandela and release balloons into the sky. 27 of each color. 27. But that was as positive as the update got on Mandela's health. Local dailies were still reporting that doctors had advised the Mandela family to switch off his life support. Reports that were fiercely denied by the presidency. President Jacob Zuma, after visiting Mandela in hospital last evening, issued a statement citing that Mandela is still in critical but stable condition. This uncertainty in Madiba's progress has now left most South Africans confused over the matter. Let's allow God. Let thy will be done. Because he's the creator. He knew everything before. Our future is past them before God. So he knows everything. So he's the decider. So let's allow him to do his job. Obviously, we don't have access to how how his health is and how much he's suffering and all that. The, fam the decision really lies with the family and will fully support them. We don't feel good about To my side, I don't feel good because it's hurting him. Because he cannot talk now. He cannot say, I'm getting pains or what. We don't know how he's feeling now. 
with the machines, you know. They must leave God to do his own job. Jacob Zuma's government says South Africans need not worry about this, citing that Nelson Mandela is not in vegetative state as claimed by these reports. What's of bigger worry to the country now is the deepening dispute that has entangled the Mandela family, with experts arguing that if it persists, it could taint the rich legacy that Nelson Mandela is leaving behind. Asham Wilu, KTN, Johannesburg. The government has promised to convert the Agricultural Finance Corporation into a farmer's bank to help facilitate accessibility of credit to farmers. Speaking during the official opening of this year's agricultural show in Nakuru, President Uru Kenyatta said the government will streamline the management of cooperatives in the country in line with the new Sacco Societies Act 2008. With respect to markets, we will ensure that farmers have access to markets for their produce by providing market information as well as ensuring good rural infrastructure which will entail establishing a chain of market infrastructure all the way from the constituency to the national level. In addition to the revival of AFC, the government has also initiated a low cost credit guarantee schemes to farmers from commercial banks, namely equity, cooperative bank, family finance, and Kenya Women's Finance Trust Banks. All right, Kenya Airways has unveiled its 61st route to Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates as the airline scales sub expansion plan. The new route, which is the third to the Middle East after Dubai and Jeddah, will allow KQ to tap into Middle East region, giving Kenya success to the bustling Emirates. Adelaide Changole has the details. Airways has become the first airline in Africa to launch a direct flight to the capital of the United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi, as it seeks to shake off rising competition from regional carriers that is eating into its market share. Abu Dhabi is, is, a, is a, a country that is developing quite fast. The infrastructure here is, uh, is good and is also supposed to be even better than as we go forward. The airline is seeking a greater foothold into the Middle East market, which delivered the highest growth in tourist numbers to Kenya last year. Moreover, with trade between Kenya and UAE standing at more than $1 billion, the new route is long overdue. The increase of direct flights between the two states will present a vital alternative for business community, tourists, travelers between Kenya and the United Arab Emirates. KQ will be operating three flights weekly into Abu Dhabi, giving Kenyans a chance to experience some of the attractions the city holds. We cater to a wide range of tastes. Abu Dhabi's Capitol Gate building boasts the title of world's farthest leaning man-made tower. The Emirates Palace is one of the world's most expensive hotels, costing a whopping 278 billion shillings to build. Tourists can also visit the world's largest indoor theme park, Ferrari World Abu Dhabi, for a taste of some speed and thrills. The biggest attraction is the world's fastest roller coaster, the Formula Rosa, which accelerates from 0 to 240 kilometers per hour in just 4.9 seconds. Adelaide Changole, KTN Business Today. All right, with the rising unemployment in the country, the youth are being urged to embrace agriculture as a business and the use of modern agricultural practices. That's according to Kajato Governor David Nkediane, who spoke during the launch of the Amiran Agribusiness Center in the county. Now, the youth can develop meaningful sources of livelihoods in modern agricultural production practices, he says. With increasing population, food security has become a priority area for the government and other stakeholders in the country. But with the changing weather patterns that have led to unreliable rainfall in most parts, it has now become prudent for farmers to embrace new farming methods that minimize the use of natural resources like land and water while maximizing on production. Amran Kenya has launched an agribusiness training center in Kimana, Loitokto, Kajiado County, aimed at training farmers on modern farming methods. We also want to make sure that we help our youth and women, and we want to make sure that as we help them, we fight hunger, we improve nutrition, and we also create jobs. Farmers are also expected to be trained on the use of precision irrigation through the use of drip irrigation and greenhouses that will help reduce the amount of water used in farms but ensure crops get enough water for its growth and maximum production of food leading to food security in Kajiado as well as good health for all.
Agriculture is also seen as the most appropriate way of combating the current high rate of unemployment by encouraging the youth to take up agribusiness projects using modern methods of farming. Speaking at the launch of the center, Kajiado governor promised to support farmers in the county by building cooling warehouses where farmers will keep their produce as they await better market prices. Philip Kitan KTN Business Today. All right, and now welcome to you, Sports Brief. Now, defending champion Carl Flash Tundo started his Safari Rally title campaign on a positive note after climbing to the leaderboard on the opening day of the 61st KCB Safari Rally. Tundo, photo of opposition from Uganda's champion Jess Mangat, rivals Ian Duncan, Balde of Chage, and Aza Anwar. Jess Mangat and Zambia's Issa Mohammed are the best place foreigners after they won. Now, action starts proper tomorrow in Kajado and its environs. The Jamhuri Park spectator stage was where to be Friday afternoon as rally enthusiasts watched the rally speed stars from close range. The stage was a chance for the fans to have a feel of the action and the drivers did not disappoint. Local favorites Balev Chaga, Azan, Wara and Ian Duncan were all in the race for top owners. Just five seconds separated the first top five. Tundo returned 1.59 minutes, two seconds ahead of Chaga and three ahead of Duncan, while both Jas Mangat and Issa Mohammed from Zambia clocked 1.4 minutes. Tundo's crossing fingers as the toughest leg tomorrow beckons. Tomorrow is, uh, as always, safari, try and get through the first day up at the front somewhere so you have a clean car for Sunday. No, it's good. There's uh, Jazzy, I think, in his new Evo 10 will give us a, a good fight so long as the car stays together. Um, Isa, obviously, as well. Supplementary class competitors were the first to test their machines in the closed Yamhuri Park circuit. And unless their case was turned at two minutes and two seconds in a Subaru Impreza, heading the park followed by South African Geoff Bell in a Datsun 240Z at two minutes and five seconds. Organization of the Jamuri respected the stage is well managed and the organizers hope for behaved fan base come tomorrow and Sunday. We urge our Kenyans to maintain that safety, avoid careless drinking under the influence of alcohol. This event, the ARC event, is very important to us because it's a first step towards getting or getting the WRC back. When you start well, you always expect everything to flow well, but you can't become complacent. You have to go on. The, the security team and uh, all these and CDLs and all the support team and the, the people we give the job have done a wonderful job. I'm very proud about it. Deputy President William Ruto, who flagged off the first 10 cars in the morning, challenges sports managers in the country to work towards welcoming back the World Rally Championships. This event, with a partnership between the Motorsport Federation, the Ministry responsible for sports, and all partners, we must come together. And I want to tell you the Jubilee government is going to walk with you every step of the way to reclaim what the safari rally was. After the close competition, which has been witnessed here at the Amhuri grounds, all the drivers now shift focus to Kajado and its environs tomorrow and of course on Sunday, which will be two key days to decide who will take the owners of the 61st edition of the KCB Safari Rally. Reporting from the Amhuri grounds in Nairobi, I am Nicholas Mudimba. And the Mastard Safari Rally is an exciting sport. Now, Athletics Kenya has allowed the reigning Olympic and World 3000 meter steeplechase to take part in tomorrow's Parhe Diamond League. Consequently, the Kenyan Federation said today that no Kenyan athletes among those invited to take part in the World Championships trials will be allowed to take in any other Diamond League race until after the trials. Now, Kiplagat spoke while receiving 2 million shillings from Safaricom to be used to prepare and host the trials on July 13th. 192 athletes who have attained the World Championships qualifying times have been invited for the one-day event. Kenya won seven gold medals in the previous event in Daegu and during the selection, AK hopes to get the best athletes to better that score. The others who have come, come up, uh, Nancy Lagat, who won the Olympic uh, medal, has come up.
and I'm sure that she is going to win her medal in the 1500 meters. We have others like Ishoyan, we have of course Kimboy, we have Aspel. So it's not really, we're not really worried. We have Faith Chemngeti, the youngest one. All right, Gorma here have hired former Cranes coach Bob Williamson to replace Croatian Drasko Logarusic. Williamson would, could be on the bench on Sunday when Gorma here plays away to Bandari at the Baraki grounds. Meanwhile, defending Kenya League champions Task FC come home to head for the second time in as many days with former champion Sofa Parker tomorrow in a top of the bill clash at the Nyaya National Stadium. Now the two played to a barren draw last weekend. Sofa Parker are currently sixth on the standings while Tasker are a distance ninth. Now the second match on Saturdays beats Malthara United and City Stars. FC Leopards players have a responsibility of welcoming the new office with victory in Thika on Sunday. The match is even more important to the 10th placed Leopards since victory will take them closer to the middle of the table.